Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video, I'm gonna be going over hypernatremia. In my previous video, I covered hyponatremia and in this video, I'm going to highlight the causes, the signs and symptoms and the nursing interventions. And I'm gonna give you some mnemonics to help you remember this information and I'm gonna highlight the things that you need to know for your nursing lecture exams and for the NCLEX. Now, after this video, be sure to go to my website, registerednursern.com, and take the free quiz that goes along with this lecture. It's gonna test you on hypo and hypernatremia and point out things that you'll probably need to know for your lecture exams. And a card should be popping up so you can access that or a link in the description. Okay. So let's break this word down because anytime you have one of these big words, always try to break it down so you know what electrolyte you're dealing with. Okay, hyper, the first part of it, means excessive. N-A-T-R is the prefix for sodium and anemia means blood. So when you put all that together, you get excessive sodium in the blood. Now, what is a normal sodium level? A normal sodium level is 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter. Anything over 145 is considered hypernatremic. Now, let's talk about the role of sodium in the body because in order to understand the causes, the signs and symptoms, why your patient's looking that way, you need to know how it's working in the body and what's going on. Okay, sodium is a very important electrolyte that helps um, water move from inside the cell and outside the cell. It plays a big role in that. And sodium and water absolutely love each other. Wherever sodium congregates, water wants to go to that. So remember that, because that'll help you understand what's going on in the body. And I actually have some video, a video on uh, tonicity of fluids where I cover hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. You may want to check those out to understand what's going on t with the cell whenever these conditions are presenting and what type of fluids are for that because in nursing school you have to know those things. Okay, let's look at this through an illustration whenever you have hypernatremia. What's going on to the cell? Well, what's going on is that you have the inside of the cell, which is called intercellular, and then you have the outside of the cell, which is extracellular. Whenever you're getting a blood test, the blood test is measuring the amount of sodium that's outside of the cell. It doesn't measure the inside. So the blood test is picking up that there is a lot of sodium in the blood. And whenever that happens, you have sodium and water inside the cell, and they're getting lonely. And According to the rule of osmosis, things like to move from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. So it's very lowly concentrated in the inside of the cell and it's very concentrated on the outside of the cell with all that sodium in there. So what happens is that all this water rushes out of the cell to the extracellular part of the cell and the cell shrinks, it dehydrates. And this is because of osmosis. And whenever this happens, it affects a lot of cells throughout the body and you start seeing all these signs and symptoms. So let's look at the causes of hypernatremia. Why you're, what's really causing this? In order to remember this, I suggest you remember the, the phrase high salt because here we have excessive amount of salt. So just remember high salt with each letter correlating with the cause. So H for hypercortisolism. This is with Cushing syndrome. Remember with hyponatremia, it was with Addison's disease. So remember that because those two are the opposite of each other, really. And this is just where hypercortisolism is where you have an overproduction of aldosterone. And how aldosterone works, because it's just so much in the body, you're retaining lots of sodium. And your potassium will actually go down. And I talk about that in the hypokalemia videos. But you're retaining lots of salt and hyperventilation can cause that as well. Now the other, the eye, you're gonna have, this can be caused by increased sodium intake, either the patient is just eating lots of salt or um, it's happened with an IV solution. The other one, G, for GI tube feedings, and this is where um, maybe they're administering GI tube feedings, and um, whenever you do that, you also give water supplements, and maybe there wasn't enough um, ordered for the patient to have a water supplement after the feeding or something like that, and that sometimes in patients causes increased sodium levels. 
Next, the other H for hypertonic solutions. Um, this is like the 3% saline. Next, the other S for salt is sodium excretion decrease. Your body is actually retaining the sodium and it's not getting rid of it. And drugs that like to cause that are corticosteroids. Next, the A for aldosterone problems. This goes back to your hypercortisonism with Cushing's, but you can also have where this again is just increasing the reabsorption of sodium, you're retaining it. Next, L is loss of fluids, and this is where the patient becomes dehydrated, such as with fever or sweating, this can cause this condition. And the other one, impaired thirst. They're just not thirsty. And you see hyponatremia, especially a lot in your elderly patients because, or someone who doesn't have access to water, fresh water. Okay, so let's look at the signs of symptoms of hypernatremia. How is this patient going to present to you as the nurse taking care of this patient? What are things you're going to have to watch out for? Because tests like to hit on, they'll give you some signs and symptoms, maybe throws out a cause and ask you what electrolyte imbalance this is. So remember the phrase, no fried foods for you, because fried foods, they are full of salt. They are not good for us. So remember the word fried, okay, F for fever. The patient's probably gonna have a fever and have flushed looking skin. R for restlessness and really agitated. They're gonna be confused. They're gonna be on edge. I, inc increase fluid retention. You may see some edema and swelling. E for edema, extremely confused. And confused, like I said, this is true. I've had patients whose sodium levels have been through the roof and they are, they were alert whenever I got them, but then their sodium level went crazy and they can get completely confused. So that is definitely true. And D, for decreased urinary output and dry mouth and skin. They're just going to be really dry. Their skin's going to be flushed. So now let's talk about the nursing interventions and things that you need to know as the nurse when taking care of this patient. Now with nursing interventions, you definitely want to commit these to memory because this is where a lot of test questions will come. The scenario will give you like the sodium levels 170. What is a nursing priority for you? So you'll want to make sure you understand these. Okay, first, the first thing you want to do is you'll want to restrict the patient's sodium intake. They already have a lot of sodium on board, so you don't want them to intake anymore. So know your foods that are really high in salt because test questions will give you a scenario and list all these foods and they'll say, which one do you not want the patient to have? And just to highlight, bacon, butter, any canned foods, that's a tricky one because a lot of people don't think um, canned foods are bad with salt intake because uh, the scenario might say, oh, I'm going to buy canned corn. Well, that sounds good because it sounds like a vegetable, but it's high in salt. So make sure you know that. Cheese, hot dogs, lunch meat, processed foods, and table salt. Next, you'll want to ensure patient safety because they're confused and agitated. Make sure you have the call light in reach that you maybe have to move them closer to the nurse station so you can watch them. Next, um, this is another big one. MD may order an isotonic or a hypotonic IV solution because remember, what's happened is your cell is shrunk up and dehydrated and we need to move some fluids into that cell to get it back normal. So they may order 0.45% um, of saline. That's the biggie. That's what they normally order. But some things you need to know about whenever you're giving this, you want to give this slowly because this is causing the shifting of the fluids and you don't want to give it too much where you push all that fluid in and that cell expands too much. So you need to watch out for cerebral edema in the patients. Any signs of confusion, anything like that, knowing that, hey, we're giving too much fluid to this patient. We're shifting them too fast because we want to do this slowly over time. And then last but not least, you want to educate the patient on proper diet, especially if they're going home and they're at risk for hypernatremia, foods they need to avoid, and the signs and symptoms of an increased sodium level. Okay, so that was about hypernatremia. Now be sure to take the quiz at registerednursern.com to test your knowledge between hypo and hypernatremia, and check out my other videos on electrolyte imbalances, and thank you so much for watching, and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.